Are you a senior struggling to play decent golf? Or any golfer for that matter who's struggling, I have a simple system that's going to help you improve your game very quickly. And I'm gonna go over four steps in this video that are going to help you improve your game immediately. First, uh, do me a huge favor, click the red subscribe button below uh, to subscribe to my channel. I'm gonna have a whole new series coming up uh, in the next months uh, regarding exactly what I'm talking about today. Today's a condensed version, but I'm gonna go through the four most important steps that I want you to start following today. So jumping right into it, I want you uh, to think about how you're putting your hands on your golf club. Um, really important, what I see in my schools, and I teach a lot of three-day schools around the country, mostly in South Florida this time of year, and what I see for most clients coming to my schools is a really poor position of the hands on the grip. And for most of you, this is causing a lot of your problems with the game. And it shouldn't be so complicated. I know it's really the first thing that we teach a beginning golfer is how to put their hands on the golf club. But what happens over time, it just evolves. So uh, I really think it's uh, critical here uh, to see when we put our hands on the golf club, to uh, see that we can balance the club with our index finger and the heel pad of our hand. So I only have the index finger here on the grip here, and the other three fingers are off and the thumb is off, and I can balance the club here in a position that also shows the club face in a vertical position looking at the leading edge of the golf club. So you can see the leading edge is vertical, the club is supported here by the heel pad of the hand and the index finger. From there, I can wrap the fingers on, around the grip. From this position also, I'm able to cock the wrist and at least get a decent angle between my leading arm and the golf club. It's really critical for developing speed, but also for delivering the golf club properly through impact that we have this orientation. When we go to swing the golf club, the hand will come into this orientation and we need to see that it matches for you. And so the grip is customizable for every golfer. Uh, but at the same time, we need to set up with that heel pad on top. So when I look here from the face on camera, I wouldn't see the butt of the club here to the side of my arm like this. I would see that it's pointed under that leading arm. So I would not see the top of the grip from this camera. We're also starting with the hands just slightly forward, which is gonna make it a little bit easier to get a little bit more lag through impact. So making sure that we have the hand in this orientation, then from there, it is going to be customizable, which means we'll be able to rotate the hand. If you're slicing the ball, we'll rotate the leading hand a little bit more over so more of the back of the hand would be towards the camera in this case um, and that's really important i see a lot of people with far too weak of a grip or what they think is neutral with the back of the hand towards the target and that's causing your whole problem in the game of golf because if the golf club's coming through impact in a more open position it's going to cause you to compensate to change your aim uh, to flip your hands to come over the top and all of these issues that a lot of you are looking to solve can be solved simply through the setup. So when we put the leading hand on the grip like this, then we have to talk about putting the trailing hand on the grip. And it's also important to try to see that we get the palm of the hand as a starting point, the palm of the hand more towards the target, and then wrap the fingers around so that the hand fits together with the thumb properly. I prefer to overlap my little pinky, and this is an overlapping grip. Um, other people do well with the 10 finger grip, uh, and some have the interlocking grip. All are fine. It's the orientation of the hands that matter, so that when I put that hand on the golf club, I have the thumb uh, to the other side, and I feel the fingers underneath the grip. It allows me, in the swing, to move the club properly and most efficiently. So the second really important point uh, and again, in almost every lesson that I teach, uh, in every golf school, uh, most of my clients are not aligning themselves properly towards the target. So it's really, really critical to work on alignment and to do so without an alignment aid. 
Uh, it's really, really important uh, to get used to aiming. And so uh, there's a lot of ways to do it. I'm gonna go through what I recommend. I know many of you and I see uh, in my schools, uh, people are picking a spot uh, between themselves and the target. Uh, you know, and that can work if you find a suitable spot, but a lot of people doing that end up not getting lined up properly. So I'm gonna talk about what I think is probably the easiest way uh, to do it. I want you to be checking yourself though. Whatever method you use, the key is to be checking yourself when you're practicing. So if I pick a tree out there, I'm gonna pick a tree out. Uh, let's pick this tree closest to me here so it's a little bit offline with this camera. Uh, but if I pick that tree there, all I need to do is hold the club here like this so that I can sight down it like a gun barrel and I can hold it there. I can see that it's aimed there and without moving it, without moving the orientation, I'm going to line up my toes with that line. From there, once the toes are in alignment, they may turn out the leading foot as it makes it a little bit easier to go through impact. So from there, uh, and ideally my feet would be a little bit parallel left of that target. Uh, so if you drew a line from here, it would be the distance from the ball left of the tree, which is about 18 to 20 inches. Uh, so that would be uh, ideal. That's my alignment. And then I could get set up, get my ball position right, and I would know that I'm lined up properly. I could check myself. And again, I'm gonna straighten the lead foot first, check myself put the club down touching the toes, and then step back. You could take another club, uh, another, you could take another club and sight down the line. But for me, that's pretty perfect right there. And I do this a lot, so then I'll change targets um, and choose a palm tree over there um, or another target over here. And I'll just practice lining up so that when you get to the first tee, uh, it's not an issue and you don't have your playing partners telling you the whole day hey, Joe, you're lined up wrong. Or you hit it over there, yeah, that's right where you lined up. Uh, so we feel like we're lined up properly when we're playing, but if you check it, in a lot of cases, you're 30 or 40 yards off. And so this is really sad because that's a reason you're mishitting golf shots. So we talk about grip, we talk about alignment. Alignment is super, super critical. And we have to get it right. And so and I know this is, uh, common sense fundamentals, uh, but there's a reason they're fundamentals. We have to get them right. I see it again, every school, grip, alignment. If I can get these things straightened out, then we can work on the main issue in the swing, which we're gonna talk about in a couple minutes. So working on alignment, so you can have a system. So another way, uh, aiming the club face at the target, getting the feet, so I'll be getting lined up. And then if I take my head and I just turn it this way, I can also see, I could actually hold the club like this, but I can also see, as long as I keep my eyes in line with the target line uh, and just rotate my head like that, I can also see where I'm aimed and check it. So when I'm getting lined up, when I feel like I'm lined up properly, all I have to do is turn my head and I see the target. For a lot of people, what they'll do, they'll be lined up here and to see the target they have to open up their body, or they're lined up so far left, uh, which isn't so often that they don't have to, that they have to look out to the right for a right-handed golfer. So look at your alignment, practice uh, lining up, um, and then we're gonna talk about uh, the third step. So the third step that's gonna help you, uh, and probably the most important step for helping you improve your game quickly is to set up on your impact plane. And that's why my method's called set up for impact. But again, this isn't really about a method. This is about finding an easy way to help you improve your ball striking. You don't even have to think that it's a different method. All we have to do is set up closer to the plane we're gonna be on at impact. And this confuses a lot of people. Uh, really all you need to do is to look and see that every golfer, and I don't have to put, I can put pictures of tour players here, which I will. Uh, and you can see that all the tour players at impact from the down the line camera have the club in alignment. So if you look at the relationship of the club to the trailing arm, you'll see it's in line or it's on the same plane at impact. So it looks like that. It's not how they set up. So they set up like that 
and at impact it's like that and usually the elbow is bent at impact but the forearm of the trailing arm is always in line. Uh, the videos I'm going to show you here next uh, you're going to see setup and impact, setup and impact and you'll see the difference between setup and impact and how they would had to adjust and compensate in going from one from setup and to impact and then showing you uh, my swing and the swing of Bryce and DeChambeau and you'll see that there's much less difference and any of your playing partners, yourself, kids, uh, somebody 100 years old, everyone's going to have the club in alignment at impact and the simple reason is the centripetal force of the swing pulls the arms to that position. You could just have somebody set up like this uh, or just set up like this, raise the club up and have somebody pull the club head away from you and you'll see this happen. Um, and so uh, you see tr some tour players, uh, Bryson DeChambeau uh, sets up like this, as do a lot of the long drive people, uh, Steve Stricker. Uh, there's a number of players getting closer to this. A lot of, uh, on the women's tour, you'll see a, a, quite a few pretty close to set up on their impact plane. And uh, it certainly makes the game a lot easier. I've been teaching this concept for over 25 years and I see amazing improvement in my clients simply from learning to set up on their impact plane. And it's really easy to do. A lot of people have some complication getting set up simply because, again, the grip is off, the alignment's off, uh, and then it doesn't work, and then they're frustrated. But that's why we're going through this step-by-step -step grip. We're getting our aim. And then from your normal setup position, I'm just going to have you raise your hands and arms up to here, cock the wrist, uncock the wrist. So when the wrist is uncocked, this is called ulnar deviation. You don't need to know the term, uh, but it's a position where the wrist is in an uncocked position. And then we're going to put the trailing arm, trailing hand and arm on the club. And we come down, same distance from the ball, the club's here at setup as opposed to here. And there's a very good reason for this. When the club starts here, but at impact, it's going to come into this alignment you can see the clubs moving away. Even here, the club head's moving away from my body. And so in the golf swing, this is where you're having difficulty in your back swing or change of direction or you get over the top. The club is going to lengthen away from your body because of this effect and you're forced to compensate for it. Uh, so for each golf club, it's a different amount. With a six iron, I've calculated at four and a half inches that the club head's moving away from your body. With a wedge, it'd be about two to two and a half inches. With a driver, about six. Um, and that's why pe some people are consistent with irons, but not drivers, or they have their favorite club, but the rest of them aren't so good. Uh, it's simply because uh, of this change that's happening. Then the orientation of the arm, uh, the trailing arm especially, is really important. But the leading arm, we talked about grip strength earlier. The leading arm is also important that we have this orientation and the heel pad on top and then the trailing hand underneath uh, making sure that it's on plane with the golf club at least to the elbow. So I'll set up here with the trailing elbow a little bit bent into my side and the clubs in that position. So it's really not that different but I don't have to compensate when I swing through impact because I'm already on that plane so I'm not searching for different planes. So I'll swing the club back and through on a single plane as opposed to what uh, conventional golfers are doing where they're trying to find the proper position at the top of the swing and wasting countless hours. Uh, in some cases people have worked for years on how to take the club back because it's so complex. So if we set up on our impact plane simply here raise up and you can even set up a little bit more upright like that. So I'm set up in a more upright position and then when I swing I'm just going to return to that same position. So it's just back and return to impact. This brings us to our fourth and final point for today and that's the most important part of any golf swing which is impact. And Impact is really the moment of truth and I don't see a lot of instructors out there really teaching impact. There seems to be an expectation that if we take the club back a certain way and cock the wrist and get in the right position here 
that impact will just happen. And the fact of the matter is we need to be focused on impact. We need to be working on impact almost exclusively because impact is what counts. And you see the top players in the game, when they go to the range to practice, they almost all have a, or a launch monitor with them to tell them what's happening at impact because nobody can really see it. It's really critical to know that that club face is staying square through impact, that the path of the club, that it's moving towards the targeted impact, um, and also the angle that the club is coming into the ground. Is it coming in too steep? Uh, is it too shallow? Uh, it's really important to know those numbers uh, so that you can improve your ball striking. And that's really impact-based training is the way to improve your game the fastest. And my drills on the website really show you how to do this step by step. We start out uh, with really learning to make perfect impact on a swing that long. We're making perfect impact, learning how to make a flat spot, uh, which is just where the club is really making impact and just gliding along the ground. So it's just scraping the ground. It's not pounding into the ground. And it also puts the club on a straight line through impact uh, just for a small amount. But we have a flat spot and a straight spot. And it's also the same effect, getting this grip leading through impact, the same effect keeps the rotation down so there's less club face rotation through impact. And so we need to focus on creating that impact. So I'll start out like that. I'll start out like that, just learning uh, to keep the club face flat, square, straight line, and then work on hitting the middle of the face. Hitting the middle of the face is really a function of your distance from the ball, which I show you how to find simply by using your practice swings. So when you make a practice swing, I make several practice swings, you can see where the club's making contact with the ground. And then if we just move that distance from the ball, we'll just do the same thing. And uh, it should hit the middle of the face like I did there. And so uh, really, impact is really most important. And then for a lot of you, like me, I started feeling some aches and pains and uh, had some back issues and knee issues from another swing that I was doing. Um, and uh, after I got over 45 years old, so I'm 58 right now, and so I understand that we get tight and we get tight backs and tight knees. And a lot of it's from trying to do unnatural things. A lot of people have tried to keep their feet flat on the ground or their leading knee bent. And uh, from my time uh, trying to swing like Mo, uh, I was so far from the ball. Uh, I still struggle sometimes with the leading knee being bent through impact. And so the solution is really uh, to practice uh, letting, the, letting it straighten after impact and this also gives me more efficiency. My ball speed goes up, my distance increases, and my body feels better. So it's really important as you do the drills uh, that you work on impact. Once you've got, the first step was grip, uh, the second step was alignment, uh, the third step getting the orientation of the club to the trailing arm, and then it's about working on impact where so I'll start out with some really short swings, just mimicking exactly what I want uh, to happen through impact. And when I can do that perfectly, then I'll move on to longer swings. But again, it's part of my program. There's really a lot of steps in optimizing your setup. I have a complete blueprint on my website at setupforimpact.com. It takes you step by step through it. Again, we want to keep it as simple as possible. My main goal for you is to help you improve today as quickly as possible uh, following this simple program. And if you do it from this video, I'm thrilled. So again, if you haven't subscribed uh, here, just click the red button below, uh, hit the bell to accept notifications. I'm gonna have, as I said earlier, a lot of new videos coming out trying to help you improve your game. For those who wanna speed it up, visit my website, setupforimpact.com and uh, look at my schools. I have a lot of schools in South Florida, uh, three-day schools, and then later in the year around the country. That's the fastest way to really improve your game, and I can look at each of you and help you improve very quickly with my customizations. Of course, the memberships allow you to do that as well. On the website, you can send in videos for my review. It's a very simple process. So any questions or comments, please pop them in the box below. 
Thank you very much for watching. I look forward to seeing you in future videos.